day star like you was birthed? The first thing that comes to mind is looking at Lily's closet at home and thinking that she should never have a closet door. It was eclectic and not generic. Where the idea was birthed, like I don't remember any specific moment. I just remember people that like reflected the idea in my head. And then I remember me and my mom like drawing a website because like she didn't know like really what a website was. It was my mom's friends, it was people I went to school with, people I worked with when I started college. They just had this energy that was just intoxicating that started with their clothes, but really was just more so the confidence and ease with which they wore their clothes. That was probably about six or seven years ago. I was fashion styling at the time, and I wasn't happy with it anymore because of how generic I felt it was becoming. I wanted to have that ease that I saw in like the certain people that inspired me, but I didn't have that ease because I was also at the same time like trying to fit a mold of like what I thought was cool in magazines, which was like Kate Moss, which was like skinny, which was like skinny jeans. I remember I'd like go to like these denim shops with my mom all the time and like try to get skinny jeans and then like I'd cry. I was squeezing over the biggest size and I was never gonna look like Kate Moss and I was never gonna look like Sienna Miller. I kinda didn't wanna care about fashion because I associated it with feeling like depressed. <laughs> I think the contrast somehow to her closet, to Lily's closet with uh, the fashion pages of the magazines that I was styling at the time, somehow that became a very acute to me visually, the difference. Around that same time, we couldn't use those designers that weren't advertising. We couldn't use those, um, the jewelry that was so unique and authentic and individual anymore. We had to use the diamond jewelry designer on Madison Avenue. The editorial pages were, no, were, you know, were, were becoming advertorials, and so the only place that you could then have that full expression in fashion was to then go to a person who was not being edited. Throughout my like teenage years, like my focus in life was just like purely on all the th prescribed things that I thought I had to do to like be successful. That was all I thought about. So I was like, how can I do as many extracurricular activities? I, like I had no space in my life to actually like feel anything because I was always like competing to like be the best so that I could get into college. And I didn't even know why I wanted to go to college. I thought art was like. Um, drawing inside the lines. And the same goes with the clothes. Like I didn't know that anything existed outside of skinny jeans. The marketing machine today, it's designed to brainwash from a very early age and it's designed to make everybody feel as if they need to buy something to feel better about themselves. Only hanging out with my mom and only and only and listening to my mom's conversations with her friends that were the yoga teachers or the stylists or the makeup artists. Those were all the moments where I was like a little like sparked. What style like you was saying is that it's for a healthy society and a happy and a healthy culture um, and a thriving culture people should feel empowered to be more themselves and then to want to consume something because it adds to their lives and not because it's something that they need because they're deficient in something. When style like you started and I was like interviewing these people like my mind was being literally blown. I was having a heart attack all, like every single day. Like I remember the first person we interviewed was like, I'm inspired by the moon and like the stars. And I was like, what? Like you are, like what does that mean? Style Like You happens wherever I live. And that's been a lot of places. I live a few blocks away from my mom's apartment. My mom's apartment is where we work. So it's basically like my entire life is in like a three block radius. I don't consider work and or Style Like You and my life to be a separate thing. It's a completely seamless, uh, full expression of my life. The site began with doing profiles on individual people and their closets. The closets being a metaphor for one's inner life and how the inner connects to the outer life. So it's not just about their sneakers, but it's about like what led up to them being so passionate about their sneaker in order to continuously prove that style is something that can't be bought. In other words, your heart can't be bought, your soul can't be bought, your mind can't be bought. And what we always try to do with all of our content is not make it super intellectual, but make it personal. Through hearing someone speak, you can maybe connect in a way that can be like transcendent. One of the hard parts of Style Like You is how much we fall in love with the people that we shoot. I get a lot of anxiety about like, when am I gonna see them next? Because like, we've sat with them for four hours and like, gotten into everything about who they are and connect with them on such a deep level and like we're all in love with each other by the end.
but then there's 800 of these people. And always in my mind, you know, I'm thinking of how I would love this one to meet that one and this one to meet that one because I feel like we're a tribe. We chose to do the Hasidic Jews because the beauty of their style, the fact that they embroider things, the fact that they, they make things by hand, the fact that they wear the same thing because it has history and meaning, all of these things are, are very much lost in this automated, formulaic, conformist, consumerist culture. Prior to the Hasidic party, Lily and I are basically an hour before doing a shoot while we're about to have this big event. You know, the finishing touches of the video were, were happening in that moment. You know, everything's borrowed, everything is, you know, done on a dime. It's very rare that everyone get, comes together, and when they do, I, I think I'm probably my, the happiest. At the beginning of the site, I was worried that I was going to be overshadowed by my mom because she's a loud, big personality. Like when I talk about those dinners that we used to have, I wasn't speaking because I didn't have anything to speak about. I wanted to sound cool and I wanted to have interesting things to say, but I didn't really have anything interesting to say because I was like a robot person. I thought I might need to separate from my mom and go do my own thing and get an internship at like a film company or something because I thought that I wasn't going to be able to like flourish and become my own person within the confines of working of working with her on style like you and I thought it was just going to be like the Elisa show. The opposite thing ended up happening. I'm not in any way doing the things that I used to do which was like living 100% for like safety and and success. I mean I, I eventually dropped out of college for this. I feel if it's liberated me to this extent then it has the power of liberating other people so I feel like I'm sitting on something that has this power and the thought of doing anything that doing it let, th there's no like this is going to exist until I'm dead because like there's no way I'm not going to do whatever I have to do to like continue its existence. We're capturing the culture in the moment and in order to do that you've got to be kind of dancing on your toes. If this is how I feel this is how everyone could feel and that's what we're trying to spread. That you know the idea that what we really need is this kind of connection with each other. That's what really makes people happy. That's the pill that everyone needs to swallow.